Hello, Tim from Fair Play now on the 10th of May 2023. So after yesterday's video, you know, the first one I did when I was talking about is it all over with the whole Lurgy or are there more tricks they're going to play on us down the line? And like I suspected, the vast majority of viewers probably including you, uh, thought, no, it's just a temporary respite or that things certainly aren't over. Uh, yeah, stuff to that effect. And I would agree with you, um, to be honest with you, I do tend to play devil's advocate from time to time, but I certainly think we need to be on our guard. We can't just go back to being you know, kind of completely naive and innocent and living in a state of bliss, thinking that everything's okay in the world. We do need to have eyes in the back of our heads now and just look out for any nonsense. Um, but I think one good thing from the last three years is we've been trained up now to spot any nonsense as soon as it kind of starts. And then, yeah, we can hopefully nip it in the bud again. Uh, some viewers have said that it's kind of a t test run. It's been a test run over the last three years and the powers that shouldn't be now know what their mistakes have been, what the weak points are, what the strong points are kind of on our side. And they can uh, regroup and try again at some stage in the future. But we also know what their weaknesses are. I think that is something that cuts two ways. So we shall see. But like I say, we now know to keep an eye out and to be prepared. And I think as we go forward, I am going to talk about issues sort of broadly to do with prepping, I would say. Uh, that's a bit too narrow a term for it but yeah, really prepping for whatever might come our way in the future so I'll start throwing in a few videos on kind of a prepping nature I think going forward but one thing I would say and I was talking to my wife Lorraine about this the other day it really seems like when you get out on the roads and you're driving out and about it really feels like the traffic out there is now at long last back up to pre-2020 levels, you know, 19, 2019 levels. Don't know what you think, but just everything seems to be a lot busier than they have been on the roads over these last three or so years. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed that. I've noticed it and obviously Lorraine's noticed it because she kind of mentioned it to me. So, yeah. Do things seem like they're back to 2019 levels as far as traffic's concerned? As far as, I don't know, probably numbers of people in shops and uh, supermarkets, restaurants, pubs, etc. Uh, or are things still a little bit on the quiet side your way? Leave a comment in the comment section below. It'd be quite interesting to see what other people's experiences are on this. So here's just a little thought about the arrests that happened in London on Saturday when some anti-monarchy protesters wanted to have their placard saying not my king and the police intercepted their van, took all the placards and arrested the ringleaders and I noticed that the mainstream media, there's uh, they're kicking up a fuss about it. There's headlines along the lines of this is a direct attack on our democracy. This is an affront to democracy and a few others of that nature. Well, <laughs> it begs the question. They're, they're concerned about it and rightly so. But where were they two or three years ago? My question to any mainstream media people watching is where were you back then why weren't you reporting on 
these arrests? Why weren't you reporting on the demonstrations, the huge demonstrations that were happening two years ago? And you either didn't report on it at all or you were, you were reporting on it in a very negative fashion. Oh, a, f oh, a few hundred, couple of hundred far-right conspiracy theorists are demonstrating against lockdowns when it's more like 200,000, not just 200, 200,000 people, ordinary, decent, hard-working people protesting. So where were you then? That was a huge affront to our democracy and yet you weren't to be seen at all were you nowhere in sight so here's just a couple of uh, thoughts about charlie boy's coronation not a subject i've been talking a great deal about don't really want to give it energy it doesn't deserve but here's a couple of nuggets for you First of all, did you know that the period of time that elapsed between Queen Elizabeth's funeral last year and Charlie Boy's coronation a few days ago just so happens to have been six months, six weeks and six days. And yes, I did check that on the calendar and it's exactly right. So what's the chances, eh? Now you might be thinking, Tim, yeah, that's just coincidence, mate. But yeah, is it? Is it? Especially when you take it in conjunction with this other nugget that I got from Marty Bucko. If you don't know Marty, he's got a great channel here on YouTube. Uh, well worth checking out and subscribing. I'll leave a link to his video where he talks about this in the uh, description box and comment section below. But what he was saying is obviously the date of the coronation was the 6th of May 2023. If you take the British way of doing dates with the day first, that's 6th of the 5th, 23. And now if you take the kind of positions that the num uh, letters of the alphabet are in, so A is obviously number one, Z is number 26, well, uh, number six is F, number five is E, and the 23rd letter is W. And you flip that around and what do you get? W, E, F. So, yeah, yeah it's amazing how m many of these coincidences crop up when you're talking about these big events and uh, what goes on around them. And if these were just isolated incidences, I could understand people's scepticism, but this kind of thing just seems to happen all of the time. So yeah, what do you think? Coincidence or not? I'll leave it there and back tomorrow. Tim from Fair Play now, thanks for watching.